Back in the 1940s, there was one man who was recognized as Mr. Basketball. When he came to town, everybody wanted to see him. A lanky guy with thick glasses, well, what's the big deal here? The big deal is he was the first true dominant big man, a basketball celebrity. Hey guys, hope you're all healthy and doing well. Purple Prince here and today I want to tell you the story of George Mikan. George Lawrence Mikan Jr. was born on June 19, 1924 in Joliet, Illinois. He was born into a Croatian family and George was one of three brothers, all of whom helped out at the family's restaurant. All of the brothers were tall but George Mikan stood out from other boys his age. By the time he was 11, he was well over 6 feet tall, was very awkward looking and wore thick glasses. Young George was never really that interested in sports. The only sports he did as a kid was the game of marbles, in which he won a countywide marble shooting championship. In high school, George Mikan made the men's basketball team, but soon was cut because he couldn't see without his glasses. Mikan remembered his high school coach telling him, you just can't play basketball with glasses on, you better turn in your uniform. So Mikan began to play on the local Catholic youth organization team but soon afterward broke his leg when he stepped on the ball. He could not even walk normally for about a year and a half. With his basketball career on hold, Mikan decided to become a priest but then began to play again once his leg healed. Shame to Notre Dame University whose school's coach told Mikan that he never could be a good basketball player because he was too tall and slow. And that's where DePaul University came in an unknown entity in the world of basketball with a new head coach, Ray Meyer, who had seen Mikan play and wanted to work with him. He got Mikan into the gym working relentlessly on improving his footwork and agility. He'd have Mikan run to try to keep up with the guards, he'd have him move side to side, up and back. When we had dances at school, he would tell me to dance with the shortest and smallest girls. He figured that would force me to improve my footwork, otherwise I'd step on them and hurt them. Everything turned out pretty well as Mikan became a star center for his team. So good offensively that men's basketball rules were changed during his college years to prohibit goaltending which forced him to stand farther from the basket. As soon as George stopped feeling sorry for himself and realized his height was something to be admired, he was on his way to being great, said his former college coach Meyer. Mikan led all college teams in scoring for the 1944-45 and 45-46 seasons, averaging more than 23 points per game both years. He became a three-time All-American and was named College Player of the Year in 1946. For his whole college career, Mikan averaged 19.1 points per game. After graduating, Mikan signed a five-year contract with the Chicago American Gears in the National Basketball League and won his first pro title in 1947. His $12,000 annual salary was the highest ever paid to a basketball player. During his rookie season, Mikan scored an average of 16.5 points per game. Mikan drew many new fans but the gears were financially unstable and the team went bankrupt after his rookie season. When the gears folded, a lottery gave Mikan's rights to the new franchise, the Minneapolis Lakers. Mikan was sought out by Johnny Kundla, the new head coach of the team, and later convinced to sign a one-year, $12,500 deal with the Lakers. The deal paid off massively for the Lakers. Not only Mike improved his value on the court by averaging 28.3 points, a mark that led the league, but he also became the first celebrity of the game. When the team traveled to New York City's Madison Square Garden, the marquee would read, tonight, George Mikan vs. Knicks. Many fans came just to see this giant of a man play. By today's standards, Mikan would be just your average center at 6'10", but in the midst of the 20th century, he was considered a freak. It was the last season of the league known as the Basketball Association of America, and the Lakers, led by George Mikan, won the title. In 1950, Minneapolis Lakers were once again championship favorites, and once again, they won the title. Many strategies were used to try to stop Mikan, and one exceptionally odd game happened in 1950 when the Lakers faced Fort Wayne Pistons. With no rule limiting a team's time of possession at the time, Pistons spent much of the game walking and standing with the ball. They ended up winning the game 19-18, but Mikan scored 15 of the Lakers' 18 points. The 24-second shot clock was instituted a few years later, largely in response to this game. By this time, George Mikan was a full-blown celebrity. 
He was on the cover of every major magazine, endorsed everything from gum to beer, as was featured on Edward R. Murrow's Person to Person national TV show. Back in those old days, I'd arrive by train or plane a day or two ahead of the team to promote the game. They'd take me to a hotel and I'd do an interview after interview to try to drum up business and sell tickets. No, I never minded any of the extra obligations. You know, when you think about it, it was pretty good stuff for the big kid with the glasses who nobody thought would be able to play. Now, all these years later, I'm just happy to have left my mark. And on the court, he just kept winning. He led the league in scoring for his first three seasons and the Lakers won the championship in five of the first six NBA seasons. The only season the Lakers didn't make the finals was because Mikan was injured. The Lakers lost to Rochester in the division finals in 1951. Mikan insisted on playing in the series against Rochester with a fractured leg. The doctors taped a plate on it for the playoffs. I played alright, scored in the 20s. I couldn't run, sort of hopped down the court. Unfortunately, injuries ultimately ended his career. After winning his fifth championship, Mikan surprised the basketball world by announcing his retirement from the game. He was just 30 years old, but a young man with a heavy injury history. During his career, he had fractured both legs, both feet, a wrist, several fingers and his nose. He had had 166 stitches, suffered from a permanent limp, lost a kneecap and could not fully straighten his arms. After one year of retirement, he was pursued to return to basketball, but it just wasn't the same anymore. He couldn't play the same minutes nor bring the same productivity. After the 1955-56 season, he retired for good. At the time, as the all-time leading scorer with 10,156 points. In total, George Mikan played in 439 games and averaged 23.1 points and 13.4 rebounds. In 1959, George Mikan was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. After the end of his playing career, Mikan stayed close to basketball. He had a short, unsuccessful coaching stint and was the first commissioner of the ABA. His greatest accomplishments, though, belonged to his playing career. The first celebrity, a player so great that the rules had to be changed. An attraction to fans and most importantly, not your prototypical looking athlete slash superstar. He was different, but great and as the Associated Press recognized him, the greatest basketball player in the first half of the 20th century, Mr. Basketball, George Mikan. Thanks for watching the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. How important do you think George Mikan was to basketball and its growth? How good of a player was he and where would you rank him among the all-time greats? Please leave a comment below. As always, don't forget to like the video, share it with other basketball heads and subscribe to the channel. Thanks, I'll see you around. This is Purple Prince and I'm out. Talking about.